family members can you include in your application for asylum in the USA? If you're a principal asylum applicant, meaning you're the person who is submitting an asylum application based on your own eligibility for asylum, well, you can include in your case certain family members who will also get asylum status if you win your case. In this video, I'm gonna explain which family members you can include in your asylum case and provide some important clarification about details surrounding this topic that people often misunderstand. I'm Brian Manning and I used to be an asylum officer with the government, but now as an asylum lawyer, well, I help immigrants all over the country to secure their future in America through asylum. First, let's define who can be included in the asylum application of another person as what's called a dependent. Now, the idea in calling these people dependent is that their route to asylum depends on their family member winning asylum. The case really is not about them. They don't have to show that they meet all the requirements for asylum, but instead they will get asylum status as long as the principal applicant's case is approved. There are two qualifying relationships that make someone eligible to be a dependent marriage, and the parent-child relationship. As a principal applicant, you can include as dependents in your asylum case, your spouse and your children. So you cannot include in your case, your parents, your siblings, or anyone else, just your spouse and children. But there are some nuances that apply to both categories of dependents that you need to know about. It's not as simple as it might seem at first glance and people sometimes get tripped up thinking they can include their spouse or child as a dependent when in reality, they don't qualify. So let's start with children. First, to be included in their parents' asylum claim, a child must be under 21 years old at the time their parents' asylum application is accepted by the government. In other words, the child cannot yet have reached the age of 21 when the principal applicant applies for asylum. Note that it's okay if the child turns 21 after the application is filed, but before a decision is made or an interview is conducted. That doesn't matter. All that matters is that the child was under 21 when the application is filed. It's kind of like their age is frozen as of the date on which the government accepts the application. But importantly, it's not like this with the other main requirement for children, that they be unmarried. Yes, unfortunately, a child who is married cannot be part of their parents' asylum case. What really matters here is whether they are married at the time a decision is made. As where it's fine if a kid turns 21 while the case is pending, as long as they were under 21 when the application was filed, it's not okay for a child to get married after the application is filed. In short, they need to remain single, or at least not be married, throughout the asylum process. Finally, both biological and adopted children can be a dependent as well as the principal applicant's stepchildren. For stepchildren to be eligible, the marriage between the principal applicant and the child's parent must have occurred before the child turned 18 years old. All right, let's turn to spouses. For a spouse to qualify as a dependent, you'll need to provide evidence of a legally recognized marriage. This means that you should have a valid marriage certificate or other official documentation to verify the relationship. Keep in mind that cultural or religious ceremonies alone might not be enough. The marriage must be legally recognized by the country where it took place. The marriage does not need to have occurred in your home country. It's fine if you get married in the United States or some other country. In fact, people often do this where they've been living together and carrying on as a married couple and maybe their country even recognizes their relationship as a valid civil union or a common law marriage. But there's some question as to how the immigration authorities in the United States will view this. If there's any doubt as to whether your country recognizes your relationship as a formal marriage, then you may want to consider getting officially married in the United States so as to ensure that your spouse will be considered a dependent in your case. Note that you need not have been married before you entered the United States or even before you applied for asylum in order for your spouse to be a dependent in your asylum case. You just need to be married before a decision is made in your case. If you get married after applying for asylum, but before you get a decision and you want to add your spouse to the case, well, you can make this request of the immigration judge or US Citizenship and Immigration Services, known by its acronym USCIS. In fact, you can ask to add any qualifying family member, whether a spouse or a child, at any time before a decision is made, even if you had previously indicated on the asylum application form that you did not want them to be included in the claim. 
The rules for how to go about adding a qualifying family member vary by asylum office and by immigration court. So you'll need to check with the court or office where your case is pending for instructions on how to make such a request. By the way, if you want to maximize your chances for asylum success, then be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you don't miss the insights that I share on this channel. All right, we need to talk about an important distinction that's made between family members who are already in the United States and those who are not. If your spouse and children are physically present in the United States, then they can be included in your case, and if they are, they'll get asylee status immediately upon you as the principal applicant winning asylum. But if they're abroad, they cannot be included in your claim. They likewise cannot be included in your claim if you are in deportation proceedings, but they are not. Or if you are applying for asylum affirmatively with USCIS, but your family members are in deportation proceedings. So you have to be on the same track. Either you must both be in deportation proceedings or you must both not be in deportation proceedings. So what about family members who are either abroad or are not on the same track as the principal applicant? Are they just out of luck? Well, it's true that they cannot get asylum status immediately upon the principal applicant winning their case, but all is not lost. After getting asylum, whether that's granted by USCIS or an immigration judge, the principal applicant, now called an asylee having won their case, can petition for their qualifying family members to eventually get asylum status too. Remember, those qualifying family members are your spouse as well as your children who were under 21 when you applied for asylum and who remain unmarried through the time that they are approved for asylee status by way of the petition that you're submitting for them. Now, this is where the I-730 I-730 process comes in. Form I-730, refugee slash asylee relative petition, is used to ask for asylee status for your qualifying relatives. You can file Form I-730 within two years of being granted asylum, and there's no filing fee. Once you file this form, USCIS will review it, and if it's approved, your family members who are abroad will be eligible to travel to the United States as derivative asylees. When they're admitted into the country through this mechanism, Mechanism, they are considered to be in asylum status. If they're already in the United States, but were not included in your case as dependents before the asylum was granted, then they'll get asylum status upon approval of the form I-730 by USCIS. Unfortunately, at present, it is taking USCIS quite a while to process this form. The average processing time is nearly two years, so you're looking at quite a long time before your family member can benefit from your asylum status if they were not included as a dependent in the case originally, and you're instead having to do the I-730 process for them. If you're ready to take the next step and get individualized help with your asylum case, or with getting asylum status for your family member through the I-730 process, then call my office today. The number is 713-352-1593. And remember, we help people all over the country, so it doesn't matter where you are. Call us now to schedule an asylum strategy session so that we can help you secure your future in America through asylum. Again, I'm Brian Manning, and it's an honor to serve you in your asylum journey.